In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Tonight's reading from Thessalonians is mirrored in Paul's words to the Philippians, which we heard in the entrance antiphon at the beginning of Mass. It's a wonderful guide to living this Advent. Rejoice. I say to you again, rejoice. And not only for navigating this Advent, but uh, navigating the stresses and anxieties of this year, right, that, that we've come through. Last week, I was deeply hurt. I was really thrown off kilter by a conversation. The conversation was really just the straw that broke the camel's back of a long pandemic week. I don't know about you, but I have kind of a cycle about every nine days. I just break down and think that the world is ending and everything's going to hell in a handbasket and we're never going to get out of this. And, and then I kind of build myself back up again, you know, but, but it happens, right? And this, this conversation kind of broke the camel's back on that one. It was so bad that I called a brother priest who was also a full-time spiritual director at the seminary. And he reminded me that the spirit of anxiety I was feeling, he said to me, what are you feeling? And I said, well, I've got this sinking feeling and I don't want to move or do anything and I'm feeling worried and scared and anxious. And he said, the spirit of anxiety that I was feeling could not possibly be from the Lord and therefore it needed to be rejected. He advised me to go into the rectory chapel and to overtly, verbally, reject the spirit of fear, anxiety, and intense passion, and thus to invite in the Holy Spirit of God, the spirit whose gifts Paul speaks about tonight, the spirit of joy, of moderation, of peace, it's exactly what St. Paul advises us to do today. Now, knowing me, and knowing that I shy away from vocalizing such things, my fellow priest anticipated my concern, and he reminded me that this simple vocal exercise was actually something that not only does St. Paul talk about here by implication, but St. Ignatius of Loyola advised it as well. It's part of his exercises. And prepping for this weekend, I realized it's also what the apostle prescribes as he continues to speak. He says, in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your petitions be known to God. The exercise of intentionally voicing an inner dynamic externally, of giving incarnate reality to our prayer is important not just for the utilitarian sense of getting our prayers answered. It's an exercise in humility and in spiritual warfare. And if you've never believed in it before, brothers and sisters, believe in it at the end of this year. We are engaged each and every day in spiritual warfare. And the devil usually is able to hide behind his gentle nuances and and well, this isn't really a problem. You know, he, he's able to get under the radar very often, but I think this year, with everything that's happened as a result of the pandemic and all the challenges we've faced in Washington in particular, we can acknowledge that there's a battle going on inside, right? Not just outside, but inside. Speaking of John the Baptist in today's gospel, St. Augustine says this, John had no greater merit than that which came from his humility. For when he could have deceived men and been believed, he was yet of such excellence and virtue, and he confessed to men, I am not the Christ. Brothers and sisters, our anxieties, our fears, our sorrows are not things that we can deal with on our own. Neither our merits as individuals nor our merits as a human race allow us to adequately deal with what we've been through this year, or really what we go through on, on a regular basis. But this year is just such an obvious example. We need to admit 
I am not the Christ, and therefore I need to verbally call out to him for help by rejecting the negative spirits and explicitly asking for his gracious assistance. Now, what does this Johannine humility look like, this Ignatian exercise, this Pauline prayer and supplication? It begins in our Christian tradition with prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. St. Leo the Great, exhorting the Romans to advent penance, he says this, he says, fasting was ever the food of virtue. From abstinence there arise chaste thoughts, just decisions, salutary counsels, and through voluntary suffering in prayer, the flesh dies to concupiscence, and the spirit waxes strong in virtue. Don't you love that? Isn't that magnificent? Prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, the three things that Jesus exhorts us to do. And they are a, they're a Lenten practice, but they're also an, an Advent practice. We just do them in Advent with a little bit more joy because we're getting ready for the birth of Jesus and not the death of Jesus, right? St. Maximus the Confessor puts it this way, there is no sin so grave that abstinence will not cleanse, that almsgiving will not blot out completely. The self-negation, the world negation of our classical Christian penances is the Christ affirmation, the heavenly affirmation proclaiming, I am not God, I am not the Christ. This world does not have all the answers, and this world's tools by themselves will not make me feel better. If self-negation is the general theme of our spiritual warfare, our rejection of anxiety, fear, sadness, what, brothers and sisters, is to be the tone of our battle? Is it a raging, fierce argument, like on cable news? No, no. Is it raised voices and crushing blows, as we see in the streets too often this year? No, of course not. Isaiah, in an Advent reading, gives us the outline for what not to do. The Savior, the Messiah, shall bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out, nor shout, nor make his voice heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. So the instruments of this world, the anger, the screaming out, the, the breaking of things, not what we're called to do. St. Maximus, again preaching on Advent, he describes our spiritual weapons of choice, weeping, pleading with tears, repentance, grieving in humility, mercy. These are the weapons of our faith by means of which we wage war that we may use these weapons, we must, however, do violence to our worldly selves and drive out vice from our members. We must first rule in our hearts before we can seize the kingdom of heaven. It's magnificent, St. Maximus. And it's, it's true, you know, these, these don't sound like, what shall we say, these don't sound like sexy weapons, all right? This isn't an M16, this isn't a new missile system, or anything like this. Weeping, repentance, all these different things, right? But if you think about it, it's what we need to do. When we encounter this stuff, we have to get it out. We have to weep, we have to, I, I remember, it took me years, decades. I was in my mid-30s before I really learned how to cry again after childhood. And it was a tremendously liberating thing, right? Repentance, just getting it all out there frees us. And if you think about your stresses, when you're feeling stressed, when you're feeling anxious, so often one of the biggest contributors to that stress is that you feel like you can't talk about it with anybody else. 
You feel like you can't cry about it because the world will see you as weak or, or whatever the case may be. But that's not the, that's not the case. That's a lie of the enemy. These tears, this grieving, is actually a weapon for our good. And the beautiful thing about this weapon is it doesn't need to hurt anybody else. It just gets it all out there and catches the attention of God himself. Let's put it another way. In the school of St. Philip Neri, spiritual warfare calls for us to exercise mortification of the senses, the understanding, and the will. And we've been doing this in spades. I want to hear everybody singing carols at Christmas. I don't want to feel straps around my ears anymore. And yet, I know that the common good calls on me to mortify my hearing and my touch, to mortify my senses. Why, Lord? Why, why don't leaders coordinate better? Why are there different policies in different places? Why do people over here get to do stuff and we don't, or this, that, or the other? Why, Lord? Living and balancing our whys is mortification of the understanding. I don't understand. I'm not going to fully understand. But you know what, Lord? It's okay that I don't understand. I don't necessarily need to. Mortify the understanding. Lord, I'm being asked to do something I'd rather not do. Mortification of the will. That's the hardest one. It's the hardest one. And these mortifications are nothing else than what our Lord himself went through in coming down to the earth, becoming a child, living in poverty, ministering as people mocked him, and ultimately being killed by unjust men. God himself experienced mortification of the senses, the will, and the understanding. Should we be surprised that we, he calls us to do any different? But when we do it, we're in good company. We're in his company. Brothers and sisters, this Advent, indeed throughout this year, we have been given a hard but a stunningly clear opportunity for holiness, for advancing our pilgrimage toward heaven itself, in our community, we have embraced humility. We've acknowledged we are not the Christ and we need his help. The world and its ways are not the answer. We reject the tools of the world, the tools of political leaders or media personalities. We pick up the real tools of real spiritual warfare, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, tears, mercy, and pleading. We have accepted mortification of the senses and the understanding and the will. And so, and this is important, we may indeed, this Gaudete Sunday, we may indeed rejoice. We may rejoice, not because what we're doing is easy or comfortable, it's not, but because it is truly of God. What we're doing is truly of God, it is truly different from the way the rest of the world handles things and sees things. It is truly of heaven. And we believe that it will bring us greater graces than we can possibly imagine when he comes to us again at Christmas and beyond. So brothers and sisters, chin up. Rejoice always. I say it again, rejoice. Amen.